I have been playing Tekken 8 for 14 days straight now, and in this video, I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the game coming from a Mortal Kombat fan's perspective. Now, if you guys don't know who I am already, I have been on this YouTube channel doing Mortal Kombat videos exclusively since 2014, and not only do I do Mortal Kombat stuff on the YouTube front, when it comes to gaming and fighting games, I almost exclusively play Mortal Kombat and haven't given a lot of investment to the other fighting games. Not because I don't like them, but it's just because Mortal Kombat appeals to me the most. And now that Tekken 8 has came out, I've tried it and, well, you guys know what this video is about. I wanted to give a big thank you to Bandai Namco United States for providing me with a code for the ultimate edition of Tekken 8. Really do appreciate it, thank you very much. I would also like to remind you guys the best way to support this channel is to leave a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss content from me. I wanna give you guys a little bit of a spoiler here. I do like Tekken 8 a lot, and I am super open to making future content on Tekken 8, but I'm a little lost as to where I start, so if you guys have any ideas or anything you guys would like to see from me, make sure to leave that in the comments below. I am super open to any suggestions. So as I've said, I really do enjoy Tekken 8. I think the game is phenomenal. It was a little bit difficult to try to get into because of a whole new gameplay style and whole different controls, but actually Mortal Kombat is more closer to Tekken, or I should say Tekken is more closer to Mortal Kombat than Street Fighter is to Mortal Kombat. So even though there are significant differences in the way the two games play, I was able to get the handle of Tekken 8 pretty quickly. So if you're a Mortal Kombat fan who wants to get into Tekken, Tekken is going to be the fighting game for you because it is the most similar to Mortal Kombat. So anyways, let's get started by talking about the features. So there have been times where I'm not even playing the fighting game and I'm just going into the customized character feature and customizing my character. I know this is an odd way to start about talking about my thoughts on a fighting game, but this is a sign to show you that this just feels like a good, complete video game. Now, look, I'm not invested in Tekken, and apparently from what I've heard from Tekken fans is that the customization in this game is not as good as Tekken 7. I didn't invest a lot of time into that game, so for me, you're talking to a Mortal Kombat fan here, a Mortal Kombat fan's perspective. This is like a gold mine for creativity and customization, but I do acknowledge for Tekken standards, it lacks compared to the previous game. But like I said, for a Mortal Kombat fan compared to the customization options that we have in Mortal Kombat 1, once again, this is a gold mine. But even then, I mean, I had a blast creating some of these custom costumes. I made my king into both Nacho Libre and Ramses, both in his signature luchador costume and his pink suit from that singing at the party scene. To me, this is so funny, but it makes the game so enjoyable to me that I have such a fun time enjoying the characters that I'm playing with by just looking at them. That's something that I can't say I find myself experiencing with in Mortal Kombat 1 because, man, there's a shit ton of really bad costumes and you're stuck with those really bad costumes for a lot of characters in that game. And trust me, don't get me wrong, you can make your character in this game look ugly as shit, but as long as I know that I'm not stuck with that, and that's not my only option, and I have the option to create some cool costumes, like recreating some Mortal Kombat characters in Tekken, like Mortal Kombat 4 Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, and Cobra, I'm game. I mean, I literally got to do a match with Ramses from Nacho Libre and Don Ramon from El Chavo del Ocho. I mean, I know what this person tried to do with Victor, so if you're watching this video, shout out to you. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day, or belated Valentine's Day. You see, coming from a Mortal Kombat fan, some of the best looks for the characters are locked behind a paywall with the Dragon Crystals. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance Sub-Zero, Deadly Alliance Natara, Mortal Kombat Deception Lee Mei, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance Scorpion, all are great costumes, but I literally have to pay real money for my game to look good. Well, if I don't, I'm stuck with these ugly ass costumes like this, that, and especially this. 
in Tekken 8, it's the complete opposite. Not only do they all come, all characters come with costumes that actually look like what the character would wear and also previous looks from previous installments, but I have the ability to almost make them however I want them to look. There's so much freedom to just express the love for my character and the way they look that I've never felt in a Mortal Kombat game. Oh, and by the way, this is all free. The in-game currency is how you unlock your costumes and items for customization with the exception of a few things like needing to play like a certain mode or arcade ladder or something like that, something very small. And it's not a grind in any way to get these credits. I think it's called fight money. I have so much right now in the fight money bank that I haven't spent yet. And I got that amount very quick. So I never feel like I have to climb to Mount Everest to finally unlock something. And I'm not feeling like I'm having to pay taxes to the government in order to have my characters look good. They already do to begin with and everything else is extra. Now let's talk about gameplay. I'm not going to have the most insightful take on this subject because I really don't know what the gameplay standards are for Tekken. I mean, essentially, this is the only game of the series that I really got into, so I have no idea if the gameplay of Tekken 6 was better by the Tekken community standards or if Tekken 7 was better. And this is still a new game fresh in people's minds, so I'm sure later on in the months coming ahead, there's going to be sections of the Tekken community that are going to spew hot take saying Tekken 5's gameplay was better or Tekken 7's gameplay was better. But in terms of my experience, it's an absolute blast. It feels great to play. In fact, I have invested so much time into this game that I got my three main characters to the red ranks, Law, King, and Azucena. I know that's not the best rank in Tekken, but I have not even imagined that I've even tried to invest this much time into a fighting game that's not Mortal Kombat. One thing that I didn't know is that there are mashers galore in Tekken Online. I was totally not prepared for it. I thought I was used to it with Mortal Kombat and Combat League, and if you thought it was bad in Mortal Kombat and Combat League, trust me, you have not seen anything when you get into Tekken, but that's okay because you got to learn to counter and that's what I'm at least trying to do. I'm a really big fan of Street Fighter 6's modern controls because it's a gateway to get me to enjoy the game and learn more of the potential of my character and Tekken 8 has its own version of it which I've been using a lot. In fact, I have only been using it so I'm sorry I am a special style scrub but that's what it's called. Their special style and the special style controls. I really like how modern fighting games are giving a lot of tools and a lot of paths for new players to get into actual fighting game mechanics because it gets players like me actually invested into what I'm playing and having it feel good. I've been saying Mortal Kombat should have this feature since 2017, and I really don't know why it's not in a modern Mortal Kombat game. I know out of every one of the major fighting games, Mortal Kombat is the easiest controls-wise, but that still doesn't take away the fact that casual players, which is 99% of the player base, still feel like it's too hard and too complicated for them. Tekken and Street Fighter are saying, don't worry about the complicated stuff right now. Use this to help you out so you can get a feel of what you're expected to do and what this game is all about. Mortal Kombat doesn't. And it's unfortunate because if I was a casual video game player, not a fighting game player, and I was told about these features, I want to play that game that has those features. Also, if you're a casual and you want to play a party-like game mode with your friends who may be over for a party, play Tekken Ball. This can be so funny and create great moments and already does with people online. And this is also another thing that I've asked for in Mortal Kombat. In fact, this is something the community has asked for in Mortal Kombat. Why can't we have fun little game modes like Combat Ball or, I don't know, Motor Kombat? 
Puzzle combat, chess combat, Mortal Kombat has way more than what Tekken has, and we can't even get one of them ourselves. We're stuck with things like invasions. Like, really? That's the best you can do? Now let's talk about the story mode. Honest to God, that was probably the best story mode I have ever seen in a fighting game in the modern times. I kept questioning to myself, how is this not a movie? This feels like an anime movie, and a really good one too. I'm really glad the game actually gives you a game-by-game -game recap of the story from previous installments for those who are playing Tekken 8 story with no prior knowledge of the story, aka me. So when I was playing through it, I didn't feel lost at all. I really enjoyed how the structure of the story is actually focused on one character, Jin, and you're mainly playing as him through the story, but it's not limited to him. If the story calls for you to use and play another character that is appropriate for that specific part of the story, you play as that character which is the opposite of how the Mortal Kombat stories are structured, where characters get dedicated chapters and sort of have to fill a quota of what they need to do and what kind of fights they need. On paper, Mortal Kombat stories seem like a better structure, but as any Mortal Kombat fan would tell you, a lot of those chapters consist of a lot of unnecessary fluff, and it favors the heroes of the story. So you are constantly fighting the villains, and the villains are constantly losing and almost never getting to win fights or get dedicated chapters. In Tekken Story, even if you fight Kazuya way before the end of the story, you don't win that fight. It's just a fight that happens. I also love how when you get to the tournament, you actually get to decide how that tournament goes because you get to pick the characters that are in the bracket and play as them. I mean, I was sitting in my seat at this part of the story and I was like, holy shit, this is so fucking cool and so exciting. How in the hell did Mortal Kombat not even do this when that's the foundation of the franchise? In fact, Mortal Kombat has never attempted to explain how the tournament works. We have never even got brackets. And also, multi-battles? When I got to this part of the story, which I had no idea was going to be in, I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is so fucking cool. Is this even a fighting game? And I was just mashing the hell out of my buns, just mowing down those G soldiers with King and the other characters you play. It was such a cool part of the story that breaks new ground in the world of story modes in fighting games. And man, the final fight with Jin versus Kazuya was probably the most epic final boss fight I have ever played in a modern fighting game. Everything was adrenaline rushing. There was storytelling through the combat. It was immersive. The music that played in the background just made me feel like I wanted to throw punches. I've been told that when you play as Jin, eventually during the fight, you will do his Tekken 3 moves and some of Jun's moves. I noticed the change in moveset, but since I haven't played any of the previous Tekken games, I didn't know. But if I was a lifelong Tekken fan, I would have felt like I would have been ascending. And really, I already was playing the story mode. This game breaks new ground with cinematic story modes in fighting games. Mortal Kombat dominated this field for years upon years, but now they have got serious competition. The structure of the chapter system in Mortal Kombat is outdated and has really gone unchecked because since Mortal Kombat 9, there really hasn't been anything on their level. And as a result, if you notice, the structure of Mortal Kombat stories kind of just feels samey. And although Tekken 8 has a chapter system, technically, they say, okay, what if we just told a clear and focused story without the worry of needing to fill a criteria? If we need to play as another character to move on the story forward for one fight, let's do it. If we need to focus on a group of other fighters, let's do it. Tekken 8 is a new standard that I want to see more stories like this in fighting games, and especially 
in Mortal Kombat. Moving on to multiplayer and online. First and foremost, the online connection is fantastic. There's an actual connection filter, unlike one fighting game, where I can set my preference to only search for good connection players. Anytime I search, I know I will be matched with great connections, and not once, not once have I ever felt like my online experience was lackluster in this game. Also, I don't have to wait on a boring looking for an opponent screen. I jump into training mode and press buttons to get myself warmed up, and that's by default, something I cannot do in a certain fighting game. The Tekken Lounge is so great to be in this game. This really isn't anything new as Street Fighter VI did it, but I really enjoy the social connection and the social environment this game gives you with your fellow players. It gives streamers and content creators cool opportunities to include their viewers and come party together, throw around emotes and have them match up among themselves and do group matches or do 1v1s. Could you imagine if we had something like this in Mortal Kombat? Everyone just hanging out on Shang Tsung's island, getting ready for, you know, Mortal Kombat? It's also so incredible that Tekken 8 has ghost battles where you can fight an AI version of an opponent and practice to get some experience against that type of player without actually having to play against that opponent. Like, who could have thought of something like that? I never even thought such a thing was even possible. I think it's one of the coolest things that you can even download a player's ghost and it doesn't have to be just from the people you fought. It can literally be the person at the top of the ranked leaderboards, which of course I did, but I will say I do think that this whole Ghost Fighter feature needs some more time to develop because I downloaded the top ranked player's ghost and I beat him pretty easily. And I know for sure that's not an accurate depiction of how that person plays. So I'm not going to brag about that, but I'm super glad that this kind of thing is here. And it's a huge step forward in the evolution of technology and fighting games as we know it. And speaking of advanced technology, can we talk about how Tekken 8's replay system allows for you to watch your replay and the game will tell you tips on how you could have done differently to punish a certain thing or sidestep in this certain moment or do an armor move here and there. The game literally helps you in every step of the way to make sure you get better at fighting games and something that I could have never thought could be in any game. Seriously, how can any fighting game in the future not have something like this? Really? Tekken has created features that really feel like they should be staples in games to come. Lastly, I really want to just gush at the jukebox feature. This game allows you to listen to the music of every single previous Tekken game. So if you want to jam out to a specific previous game's character select music in this game, then go right ahead. Or if you want to mix and match which music you want to hear from whichever previous game in any part of the game, like I'm serious, any part of the game, like this specific menu screen or this specific stage, this specific part of the game, you can do that too. Like, holy shit. Could you imagine if we had this in Mortal Kombat? In fact, I literally asked for this to be in Mortal Kombat three years ago. Could you imagine if every single time you went to the select screen in Mortal Kombat 1, you heard the Deception character select theme or the Deadly Alliance character select theme? Or you heard the original Pyramid of Argus music from Armageddon in the Pyramid stage of MK1? Dude, why is this not in Mortal Kombat? Tekken 8, in so many ways, and especially in this way, pays so much respect and appreciation for the previous games, really, the whole franchise. It lets you appreciate and enjoy your time playing this current Tekken game the way you want to enjoy it, with the features that remind you of why you like 
Tekken. Meanwhile, in Mortal Kombat, we can barely get a 3D era recreated skin in the game. And I'm just tired. I have never been a Tekken player, and I've always been a Mortal Kombat ride or die person. I've never disliked Street Fighter or Tekken. I always saw them as good franchises and didn't have anything bad to say about them, but I just never really got seriously invested into them. Street Fighter 6 is a great game and I have plenty of good things to say about it, but Tekken 8? Guys, this game has had me hooked. Hooked on a feeling, as one has sung, that this is probably the best fighting game that I have played in a long time. I am telling you all, this is the best fighting game on the shelves right now. If you're watching this video and you're thinking of buying Tekken 8, do it. Buy it right now. You're going to have a blast. There's seriously no debate on which game is better between Tekken 8 and Mortal Kombat 1. It's an undisputed fact. I have always said that Mortal Kombat 1 right now has a lot of problems. It lacks a lot of content, but it is in a position to where it can be fixed. The fundamentals of the game are not the worst part about it, but it's up to Netherrealm to fix the game and create the best Mortal Kombat game that we know can happen. That's it for today, folks. Remember, the best way to show your support on this channel is to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as leaving a comment down below and letting me know what you think. And if you guys would like to see future Tekken 8 content from me and what kind of content you guys would like to see from me. Once again, thank you so much to Bandai Namco United States for providing me a code of the ultimate edition of Tekken 8. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.